Vision Architecture. Right. The memory co um, components, the hardware part of it. All right. First, what is memory? Memory is data storage element that uses on or states on a chip to record patterns of binary data. And on value represents one, and off value represents zero. All right. Random access memory is your first hardware component, right? Also known as RAM, is a picture of a RAM chip, right? As its name implies, the processor can access the data stored in the RAM randomly at any time from any location in memory, right? The RAM has further two types of RAM, or the static RAM. And your dynamic RAM. Also, um, memory in RAM is volatile. That means that every time you turn off your computer, right, the, it stops saving information. Right? Static RAM, also called flash RAM, is the type we can use it when we store files on USB flash drives. Static RAM is non volatile. Memory as contains is stayed on it which means you can remove the flash drive and plug it back in and you still have the same information you had there from before right then you have the other type of RAM which is DRAM dynamic RAM this type of RAM is volatile this means when you turn off a computer its contents is gone generally the memory on the motherboard is RAM, and we usually call it simple RAM. Right? RAM is used to store the data temporarily for the processor, and when the system is turned off, then all the data in it is erased automatically. Right? Uh, issue we can have with RAM is a cold boot attack. This is when the when someone, an attacker, has physical access to a computer, right, is when they perform a memory dump on the RAM, right? This is done by performing a hard reset on your machine. And usually people tend to do this these days more than just crashing your RAM. They try to put programs onto your machine to um, to take your data and information right this is what a cold boot attack looks like the attacker gets physical access they manipulate the firmware settings right then they use a cold reboot key which is found on a USB flash drive and they basically gets encryption keys from the memory Right, so you, they can assess your data. ROM attacks. One way you can be prone to a ROM attack is if you have a custom ROM chip. What I didn't mention before was what a ROM chip comes from the manufacturer. So for example, if you buy a computer from Dell, your ROM is, cre is created from Dell. That ROM has your has all the instructions needed for the computer to boot up properly right without the ROM your computer wouldn't be able to boot up right so since the ROM comes from the manufacturer there are also stuff there are also ROMs called custom ROM chips which you can buy off from the dealership right a custom ROM refers to a phone or computer's firmware based on Google's Android platform right everybody know Android is an open source therefore anybody can develop the code recompile it and release it for sale right users can install ROMs to change their device appearance and behavior this causes security issues because the person who recompiles and re-edits your code can basically put 
spyware software onto your ROM, right? Which they can track all your movements, all your data and information which is being processed. It comes up with a variety of ROM problems. Mm -hmm. instruction and execution cycle right the instruction execution cycle is the period which it takes to, um which an instruction is fetched from memory and executed when a computer is given an instruction in a machine it usually is divided into a sequence of phases right after the execution of the instruction the program counter is incremented to the point next instruction. This just means the computer is available ready for your next instruction, right? Your instruction is usually inputted by the user in human language and is then converted into machine language, also known as the binaries, which are ones and zeros. Okay. Three steps to the execution cycle is fetch, decode, and execute. Right? Fetch is when the execution cycle starts with fetching instructions from the main memory, RAM or ROM. The instruction at the current PC will be fetched and will be stored in the instruction register. You'll see what the instruction register is further decode. During this stage, the encoded instruction presented in the instruction register is interpreted by the decoder. Right? The decoder then puts it in human language for all of us to read it. The execute process is when the control unit of the CPU passes the decoded information as a sequence of control signals. Right, the, um, the CPU tries to perform actions required by the instruction, such as reading values from registers, doing your ALU mathematical problems, or all your logic functions, and writing the result back to a register. Right, what is pipelining? Pipelining is a process of accumulating instruction from the processor through a pipeline. It allows storing and executing instructions in an orderly process, also known as pipeline processing. Pipelining is a technique where multiple instructions are overlapped during the execution. Pipeline is divided into stages and these stages are connected with one another to form a pipe-like structure. Instructions enter from one end and exit from the other end, which gives you a result, and the result is then processed and readable. All right? Pipeline it increases the overall instruction throughput. That means you can do way more stuff with pipelining. All right? The pipeline system, each segment consists of an input register, an IR, followed by a combination of circuit. We just talked about the input register. The register is used to hold data and combinational circuit performs operations on it. The output of the combinational circuit is applied to the input register of the next segment. Here's a diagram. The input goes to segment 1, then register 1, segment 2, register 2, segment 3, register 3, and then you have an output. Two types of pipelines. You have the arithmetic pipeline, right? This is basically self explanatory. The arithmetic deals with all your logical values, right? They are used for floating point operations, multiplication point of numbers, etc. etc. Right? And an example of the floating point adder pipeline, right? Here, A and B are significant digit of floating point numbers while a and b are exponents the floating point addition and subtraction is done in four parts compare the exponents align the matrices add or subtract produce the result 
and this is what you normally do in your programming and usually your registers are used for storing the intermediate results between the above operation the instruction pipeline All right and this stream of instructions can be executed by overlap and fetch decoder executes phases of an instruction cycle this bypasses the three steps that we just learned this type of technique is used to increase the throughput of the computer system this sounds good as it is but obviously there are some big side effects of the instruction pipeline or, or pipeline on the whole right and instruction pipeline reads instructions from the memory Right? while previous instructions have been ex executed in other segments of the pipeline which we just saw before it goes through one and then the other then the other but the instruction pipeline reads directly from the memory right thus we can execute multiple instructions simultaneously the pipeline will be more efficient in the instruction cycle and is the instruction cycle is divided into segments of equal duration which means you'll get information evenly distributed at the same time but here are your advantages and disadvantages. The advantage of the pipeline is the cycle time of the processor is reduced, right? Which means you'll get information faster. It increases the throughput of the system, means you can request information faster, and it makes the system more reliable because obviously if it's faster, it's reliable. The disadvantage is that the pipeline processor is complex and costly to manufacture. And also, the instruction latency is more. 